started like raining really raining and there's thunder over here and so if it starts blowing on my computer I'm going to have to move and it's gonna be a really unfortunate little timing here hey y'all I see a couple people I see Aurelia and Tori good morning I have some coffee I don't feel quite awake yet I had to find a secluded spot because some members of the family are not awake yet outside and it's cold and it's raining and it's gray and it feels exactly like a holy Saturday should feel, you know? Tell me how you're doing today. We've got a few. Oh, hey, we've got <clears throat> Emily and Sarah. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> I'm not drinking some coffee still. Hey, tell me if it's, <laughs> tell me if the rain is too loud. It's thundering too. If it's too loud, then I'll move inside or figure something else out. We'll make the awkward transition. But it felt, it, I didn't want to move because it felt kind of perfect. Yeah, like, like Holy Saturday vibes. Like, it feels like the earth is weeping a little. You can see the view out here. My mom has this great like view at her house. It's quite lovely. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, good morning, Larry. It is the perfect weather for a vigil day, indeed. <clears throat> <laughs> right? It's raining. You don't want to sit in your hammock now. Um, so, we did a little Good Friday reflection service last night. I hope that if you weren't able to tune in, you can go back and check it out and just... You know, I just encourage people not to miss the steps along this journey because this is the journey to joy. The journey to joy is through the days of pain and lament and grief and suffering. It's the way out is through. So I, I like, um, oh good, the, it sounds good, the rain. I encourage folks to not skip the journey, not skip any steps, because if we skip any steps, we might, let, we might miss out on some valuable learning and some valuable lessons. And, uh, oh, I'm out at the lake. My mom has a condo on the lake. Um, yeah, we're staying here for the weekend. <clears throat> yeah, so if everybody can hear me, okay, I hope that's, hope that's good. And it's cold. It's so cold here. So, um, I want to read the Holy Friday, I mean the Holy Saturday reading for us. And there are two, but um, the one from John we read last night as part of our Good Friday reading. So I'm going to read the Matthew 27, and as part of the Holy Saturday lectionary. Um, this is verse 57 through 66. And when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. And he went to Pilate, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and asked for the body of Jesus. And then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. And the next day, that is after the day of preparation, meaning the day of preparation for the Sabbath, which we understand, at least in our modern times, to be that was Friday, and then Saturday is the Sabbath. Whether that's historically true or not, I don't know. <clears throat> oh, where was I? <laughs> um, next day after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he's been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. 
Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Because they thought that that could keep a brother down. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking today. Right. <laughs> so I'm thinking today about those Marys, about Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and then the other Mary. And I'm thinking about probably all that they wanted to do and accomplish, in which they showed up the following day. Of course, we know the story. We'll read it tomorrow. Showed up the following day only to find Jesus not inside the tomb. But they don't know that yet because it's it's Saturday and they don't they're not there yet and they don't know. And they're sort of forced by their culture. Um, their culture has this strong tradition of keeping the Sabbath. It's getting a bit wet. Probably need to go inside. wind. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about how their culture forced them to rest. And I'm thinking what a message that is for us. Here we are at the culmination of Lent. The absolute culmination of Lent. It's the last day of Lent. And all these lessons, here we are, we're integrating them and we're trying to figure out There is not a dang thing we can do about it. There is not. We cannot worry this thing into submission. We cannot make it go faster by our, oh no. Let's see. Is that helpful if I turn it in the direction? Is that better? Can you tell me if the sound is better? All right. I'm going inside relating to the weather. I'm going to lose my train of thought. That's okay. Rain surprised me. Better? Okay. <laughs> oh, it was cold out there anyway. My fingers are So they're forced, in the midst of their grief, in the midst of their loss, in the midst of what they think is an, is an ending. It's over. It's over. He's gone. The hope that we had about this person, it's gone. And then their culture forces them, not forces, but, you know, it's their tradition, to enter into Sabbath and to rest. And literally, like, they couldn't have done anything else. And I'm thinking about what a word that is for us. How we can't, we can't worry the process into going faster. We can't, um, so basically that our best medicine when we're in these moments of uncertainty and grief, is to rest. And the Marys had to rest, and the, the Jesus' disciples had to rest, and they just had to pause. They couldn't go. They couldn't fix it. They couldn't change it. They just had to rest. And it was a really uncertain moment. So that's my word for us today. Sometimes the best thing and the only thing to do is just to rest. When things look uncertain, hopeless, dark, we can't always fix them. We can't always wrestle them into submission. And the only thing we can do is go into the stillness and go into the quiet 
and rest. So blessed Holy Saturday to you all. <clears throat> um, my prayer is that each of us will find some time today to rest deeply and to allow our own selves, our own minds and hearts and bodies, time to integrate the lessons of Lent and um, to relinquish our constant need to do, 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 and speed up, speed up, speed up, and fix, 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 and instead um, enter into the invitation of Holy Saturday, which is to Sabbath and rest. All right, I love you guys. Um, hopefully see so many of your uh, masked faces tomorrow out at the ranch. Um, sending y'all love and uh, come ready to sing because we're going to sing together. Masks on. Yep, masks on. We're going to just still sing together. Um, that's our plan. It's going to be great. Yeah. All right. See y'all later. <laughs>